Hello. In this video, we're going to do a starred problem, 3.2.15 from Broberman. A starred problem means it's a problem that kind of goes beyond the typical kind of problem, beyond the ordinary kind of content. This is a problem where we'll be doing two things. We'll be finding the number of regular payments and the final smaller payment from a loan that's got level payments but unspecified term. You know, usually we know the term and we want to figure out the payments. Here we are saying we know the, the regular payments, uh, but we want to figure out what the term is. It's a loan of a thousand, interest rate of 0 0.01 per period. It doesn't say what the periods are. They could be months, they could be years, it doesn't matter. The, it's amortized by payments of 100 per period, but we're not saying that that 100 is found in the ordinary kind of way. It could be smaller than what we'd find in the ordinary kind of way if we um, specify a certain number of payment periods. It's starting one period after the loan, so it's annuity immediate. For as long as necessary, plus a final smaller payment one period after the last regular payment. Two things to solve for. Solve for the number of regular payments and also the value of the final smaller payment. What we could do to solve this is we could um, pretend that we're thinking of it as an ordinary amortized loan. We've got the amount of the loan, 1000 We've got the amount of the regular payments, 100 and sort of pretend that we don't have a final smaller payment. Let's just pretend all of our payments are 100 And we need to multiply that, because it's an annuity immediate, by A sub N, where N is the number of payments, with the given interest rate, which is 0 0.01 in this case. And we don't know what N is. We need to solve for N. Now, in all likelihood, especially because of the way they're stating this problem, N is not going to be an integer. It's going to be something else. You might need to use logarithms if you think about it to solve for n, so we're probably even going to get an irrational number, technically speaking. But, you know, if n turns out to be 17.36, then we'd essentially have 17 regular payments, and then the 18th payment would be our smaller final payment. So this is something we can definitely deal with here. Let's divide both sides by 100 and write the equation in this way. We want to solve for n. I can now to, uh, multiply both sides by 0 0.01 to get this equation. Isolate v to the n. v to the n is going to be 1 minus 0.1 is 0.9. Um, I know what v is. It's 1 over 1.01. I need to solve this for n by taking the log of both sides. So I would get uh, by properties of logs, n times natural log of 1 over 1.01 equals natural log of 0.9. This is the same as negative natural log of 1.01. .01. And so that's going to imply that n, after dividing both sides by this, is natural log of 0.9 divided by negative natural log of 1.01. .01. This will be a positive quantity overall because natural log of 0.9 itself will be a negative number whereas natural log of 1.01 .01 is positive. Natural log of 1.01, .01, press your LN button here, is this. Let's um, negate that and store it in register 0. Natural log of 0.9 is going to be negative. It's this. Divide it by what's in register 0. We get n to be approximately 10.59. So we've got 10 regular payments of 100 and then a final smaller payment. How would we figure out, so, so part of the answer to the problem is n equals 10, 10 regular payments of 100. How would we find out the value of the final payment at time 11? We can think of, go back to the original present value equation and change it to be based on what we found for n here to be 1000 equals 100 a 10.01 using 10 regular payments plus the discounted value of our last payment at time 11 it would need to go back in time by 11 periods we need to multiply it by v to the 11th solve this equation for x 
Coming to the A here, 1.01, .01, take its reciprocal, raise it to the 10th power, subtract that from 1, divide by 0 0.01. This A here is about 9.47, multiply by 100. And then uh, subtract that from 1,000. Looks like we get 52.86954693 equals v to the 11th times x. Let's store this in register 1. What's v again? v is the reciprocal of 1.01. .01. Need to raise that to the 11th power and divide both sides by that. So take its reciprocal and multiply by what was in register 1. And we get the final smaller payment, the value of x, to be 58.98. And that is the correct answer. I would encourage you to check this out by maybe making an amortization table. Actually, the book's uh, directions added make an amortization table, but I wanted to solve it this way. Um, but I would encourage you to check that out by making an amortization table and, and uh, maybe even on a spreadsheet and you'll see how this works out nicely.